Hello everybody, it is Mike Les, aka Farmhand Mike here. In this video, I am going to talk about my YouTube channel, how I got started in the social media thing, because I now have over 1,000 videos on YouTube, so I thought it was worth talking about. Not only have I just uploaded over a thousand videos to my YouTube channel here, I also just hit the 50,000 subscriber mark. So when I started this YouTube channel, it was in February of 2012, and I started it to actually upload a snowmobile video. Some friends and I went up to Michigan on a snowmobile trip, and I put together a 20 minute video, and I was going to upload it to YouTube so they could see it. Well, back then when the internet was slow, it took about 18 hours to upload that video, and when it was all done, I got a message from YouTube saying that, sorry, it would not take this video because you could not upload videos longer than 15 minutes until you had, I think you had to have over 100 videos or so on YouTube at the time before you could have one longer than 15 minutes. So with that said, I was watching a lot of farming videos and so forth on YouTube as I don't watch a lot of TV. So I thought, well, you know, all the stuff I see, I've always been into photography and some videos and stuff. So I had a lot of tractor clips and, uh, for those of you that don't know, at the beginning of the year here, I had just under 25,000 subscribers. So my YouTube channel has doubled in subscribers this year alone. So I know there's a lot of new people watching the videos. They don't know my story, how I got started, and so forth. So I figured now was a good time to do a video like I'm doing here and talk about it some. So I am a service rep for Versatile Tractor, and I get to travel all over the country helping dealers with service-related problems, demos, that kind of stuff. So I know a lot of farmers, uh, a lot of customers and so forth, get to a lot of places, get to see a lot of neat stuff. So I thought, why don't I just start doing these videos when I'm out here with these tractors in the field and so forth? So I started with a video camera, just taking video clips here and there, and I started building my YouTube channel. I was just putting like a minute clip of a tractor you know coming down the field at me and I would video it as it went by and I would put a minute you know two minute video up on uh, YouTube at just that tractor clip and that's how it all got started then I got a little fancier a little creative I started editing longer videos because people were asking for it and so forth still had no idea what I was doing uh, when I first started this the cool thing to do was to kind of uh, put some videos together and put some ACDC music or a good country song to it and, uh, of course, that has its challenges, too. You get uh, notices and so forth for using copyrighted material and so forth. Also, was reading the comments. People want to hear the sounds of the tractor. So, I started doing that, and that's how it all went. I started out with a Windows computer and I was editing all my videos on Windows Movie Maker which worked really good. I really liked that program. My oldest son Michael um, had a MacBook at the time and when I was ready for a new computer he told me dad you need to look at a MacBook Pro. They got really good uh, editing software, iMovie so I bought a MacBook and I started using iMovie and at first I did not like it. I hated it. Uh, it was trying to learn the whole Apple concept and so forth. I didn't like it, but now I've had an Apple computer now. I think I'm on my, yeah, I'm on my third uh, MacBook Pro and uh, just had really good luck with it. And iMovie is what I use to uh, edit all my videos. So as time went on, I uh, started messing around with different cameras and so forth and I uh, was just starting out with the standard uh, Sony video camera I got from Walmart for like 180 bucks or so forth and then uh, technology kept getting better and then I started mixing some GoPros into it here and there and uh, then I bought a drone uh, probably I'm on my fourth drone now so I've had uh, all DJI Phantoms I had uh, started out with a DJI Phantom 2 then I went to the Phantom 2 Vision Plus and then I bought a Phantom 4 Pro and I uh, recently just bought the DJI Mavic Pro, which uh, I really like that too. All my drones still work and so forth, but uh, I did wear the first couple out. And uh, I would like the Mavic just for its compact size, how it folds up and it's good to travel with and so forth. And as my channel grew and I uh, would read the comments and so forth, uh, I keep trying to make it better all the time, so I uh, upgrade equipment and so forth. So uh, right now, what I use mostly, a lot of my videos are done with a GoPro Hero 6 or a Hero 7. I also have a Sony 6500 camera I use for some videos, and then of course the DJI uh, drones. My YouTube channel, I am strictly a one-man show here, so I do everything. I go out, I shoot the video, I edit it, I upload it. I don't have anybody helping me, so I try to work this in as I can, and uh, sometimes it's hard, uh, 
usually staying up late trying to get it done and so forth. I don't get everything up in a timely manner like I want to, but I do the best I can. And basically my video is uh, probably 95% farming. And of course it's a lot of versatile stuff because obviously I work for versatile. But uh, anyways, I'm always looking for new stuff and I like to go out there since I know a lot of farms. I like to find that equipment that uh, people just don't get to see every day. Of course, you know, in the Midwest, it's mostly corn and soybeans, but as I travel, I like to bring a lot of different stuff into my videos. That's why you've seen all types of farming on my channel. Uh, anything from, you know, corn, soybeans, hay, silage, plowing, wheat harvest. I'm always looking for new stuff. And as this social media thing's growing, I'm meeting new people all the time, talking to new people, going to new areas. I have a lot of good opportunities coming up in the future, so stay tuned. You never know what you're going to see on here. And as I'm here talking about my social media, the other thing I got into a few years ago that I've had pretty good success on is Instagram. So on Instagram, or pretty much all my social media accounts, I go by Farmhand Mike. And uh, Instagram, I got about a 40,000 uh, following there. And I uh, put a lot of farm pictures up on there and so forth. I do have Twitter. And uh, I recently got TikTok. I have Snapchat. I don't do a lot on there because uh, there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so much a guy can do. And like I said, I had no idea what I was getting into when I got into this. Um, I by far don't claim to be the biggest or the best YouTube channel out there. I just like to bring uh, what I see, bring it to my channel here. I think a lot of people enjoy it. Obviously you do. I read the comments. Uh, I get some bad ones every now and then. But I do try to respond to comments as much as I can. But like I said, I'm a one-man team here on this whole social media thing so it's hard to keep up with everything you're always gonna have negative comments I understand that you're not gonna make everybody happy there's people that write nasty stuff here and there and so forth but the way I look at it according to the YouTube analytics um, my likes are about 97 98 percent and my dislikes are about two so if you can make that percentage of people happy I think you're doing things right this YouTube thing is really growing. There's a lot of new farming channels that have just come on board here in the last couple years. And there's more all the time. So like I said, I don't claim to be the biggest or the best. There's a lot of guys that have just had a channel, farming channel here for the year or so and well over 100,000 subscribers. So uh, wish them well. I don't know what their secret is, but uh, a lot of it's just content and getting to know that person where my videos are more focused on machinery and so forth and not so much personality. And I got some other stuff on my channel here besides farm equipment. Uh, obviously, uh, those that know me real well know I like snowmobiling and four-wheeling. So I do have a few snowmobile videos here on my channel. I got some uh, ATV videos. I got some weightlifting videos. I even got a couple from early on when my daughter was doing competitive cheer. A couple cheerleading videos I put on early on. So just a good mix of everything. But like I said, I believe probably well over 95% is farm equipment and a big percent of that is versatile tractors and with that said every year uh, when I work a farm show here for versatile it just gets busier and busier the amount of people that come into the show to meet me and uh, say they follow me and stuff and I really appreciate that and that keeps me doing what I'm doing here so every year as that following grows the shows get busier people coming in to meet me and so forth I get a real kick out of it I know when I go out in public with my family and so forth and uh, People uh, shout me out or call me out in a store or a restaurant or something like that. And I know my kids get a real kick out of it. Sometimes my, they roll their eyes about it. But uh, overall, it's pretty funny and it uh, gives you a good feeling. A couple of the common questions I get when I do meet new fans or new people is, what do you do for a living? So as I stated earlier, I do work for Versatile as a service rep. I uh, also have a local farm uh, close to me that I help out on. And uh, you've probably seen some of my farm vlogs and so forth. That's from a neighboring farm that I help out on. And uh, my family does farm. However, I live about five hours from my family farm where I grew up. And the reason for that is I started out uh, right out of high school. I went to school for ag mechanics. And I worked at a farm equipment dealership for years as a mechanic. And then in 1995, I went to work for Gale Company as a service rep. And I traveled around the country. And that's when I started traveling and really learning how farming is different everywhere. So... With Gail, they wanted me to move somewhere out in the western Ohio. So that's how I ended up across the state there. My wife and I, my wife grew up on a dairy farm. We moved out to western Ohio, and we didn't know anybody. We move out there. Uh, both my boys were born then, and uh, move out there not knowing anybody, and uh, got started, bought a house and so forth, and then met a neighboring farm. 
and I started helping a uh, different farm on the weekends back then and uh, anyways you can't get it out of your system so it was good to have a place to go on the weekends and so forth to still get to drive a tractor and help out. So that all started and then the video thing just started years later. I worked for Gale for 15 years. Of course, those of you that know Gale, they were known for forage harvesters, uh, manure handling equipment, skid loaders, that kind of stuff. And then in 2006, Gale got out of the actual egg implement business and just went mostly construction. So skid loaders, telehandlers, and so forth. And I stayed on for a while after that, but I just didn't enjoy it as much because I really like agriculture. And then in 2009, Versatile was looking for a traveling service rep in the United States. And uh, I knew a guy that worked for Versatile at the time, and I talked to him at the Farm Progress Show in... Uh, sent him my resume and so I've been with Versatile a little over 10 years now as a service rep. I know there's people I meet that think I'm a full-time YouTuber but that's not the case. I know it looks like I probably am but uh, a lot of times when I got to do these videos I got 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so and I got to try to get as much foot as I can so sometimes the sun's not right it's uh, whatever I just got to get what I can and work with what I got because I just have limited opportunities a lot of times. So anyways, uh, if you can make a living being a full-time YouTuber, I guess that'd be all right. But uh, I like what I do. I like working for Versatile. I like helping uh, neighbors out on the farm and so forth. Of course, obviously, I enjoy doing videos too. But uh, as you can see, I do a lot of that uh, video and so forth uh, while I'm working. So this works out pretty good. Actually, these farm vlog videos and stuff I do, they're actually pretty easy because you're doing a lot of the video while you're actually driving the tractor so it doesn't take a lot of editing time to do those and of course this year harvest 2019 was really awesome because we had this new versatile 365 here and this JM 1112 grain cart so it made harvest 19 one of the best ones i remember you know that it that is one good looking tractor and grain cart if i do say so myself Another question I get when I meet new people at farm shows and so forth is, who's your favorite YouTuber or what other YouTube channels do you watch? Well, that's a good question actually because the way I look at it, if I'm watching other people's YouTube videos, I'm not editing my own. So I do try to keep up with what's going on. Um, probably my most watched is Big Tractor Power. Big Tractor Power and I are pretty good friends and we talk several times a week about different things on YouTube, social media, and so forth, what I'm filming, what he's filming, and so forth. So uh, he, he's the one I talk to the most. I try to watch a lot of his videos. He tries to watch mine, but it is hard to keep up with everybody. Obviously, you've seen on my channel, I've uh, been on here with other YouTubers. I've been out to Welker Farms in Montana. I've uh, been to Minnesota Millennial Farmer. Uh, no Brian from down in uh, Chillicothe, Ohio. Several other YouTubers, but it is very hard to keep up and watch everybody. So like I said, if I'm watching somebody else, I'm not editing my own videos. But I do like to watch some trapping videos on YouTube. I like to watch snowmobile videos. And of course, you know how it is when you get on YouTube here, you can start out watching one thing and you never know where you're going to end up. Sometimes you start out watching a farming video, and then next thing you know, you're watching a trapping video, and then you're watching a snowmobile video, then you're watching a highlight from the movie Rambo or something like that, and then you're moving on to uh, somebody fixing a car or something. So it just varies, but uh, anyways, like I said, uh, farming, uh, obviously number one, that's what got me into this, because I was watching other farming videos. And then decided to start my own channel with all the equipment and so forth I get to see. So I'm always trying to bring that new content here. So uh, like I said, if you guys have something awesome and it's an area I travel through, uh, some of the things that I like um, used to do really well. It seemed like when I started this was corn silage videos, moldboard plowing, and wheat harvest used to seem like that was the top stuff that people like to watch. And this year, corn silage videos did not do so good. Uh, like I said, I'm always trying to bring new content. I do know some of the custom harvesters in my area and so forth, so I do film a lot of the same crews. But I try not to go to the same farm and have the same background every year. I like to keep it different. But like I said, this year, corn silage uh, did not do as good as it has in years past. 
Of course, this Heston stack can you see here, uh, that was something that's always fascinated me. I recently just posted a whole video on the Heston stack can. I bought this last fall. Uh, these were made back in the 70s. We had a neighbor that had one of these when I was a kid, and there was just not a lot on YouTube of these things. So I had a chance to buy this for a pretty reasonable price, so I bought it here in the farm I help out on. Uh, they feed some steers, so uh, anyways, they let me make the stacks and uh, use them for their cattle for bedding. And of course the other mystery that I have with YouTube is why does one video do so good and get so many views and then the next video doesn't do anything. I know when I do post videos that are non-farm related they don't get near the views like when I do a snowmobile video, uh, motorcycle video and so forth. Them do not do near as good as farming videos but there's times I go out there and I film a piece of equipment I'm like oh this is going to be awesome. I'll bet a lot of people watch this and not a lot of people watch it. Then you just do a video sometime you see something you know somebody you film something you're like yeah well i'm sure a few people watch this and then that one explodes so i don't know what it is they talk about the algorithm and uh of course they talk about a lot of things they talk about the thumbnail the title which i do believe a good thumbnail picture and a title is key um the clickbaiters there's a lot of people that use what they call clickbait and that's putting like a fake picture on or putting something on there or putting a title maybe that kind of uh exaggerate what's really going on in the video well I'm not gonna go there if I'm gonna have it on my thumbnail or in the title that's what the video is about I just I don't want to mislead people but uh, I know a couple years ago there was uh, other channels that were stealing video from this these people and I had a lot of my videos stolen where they copy your content and then they upload it under a different name and start a YouTube channel that way of course Google's really cracked down on that now so you don't see a lot of that but uh, there was another one that would do like the 10 biggest trackers in the world and he would maybe take a Delta track from me and then he'd take a big four-wheel drive from another channel and he'd take like 10 people's videos and put them together to make his own so that kind of frustrates me because I'm taking the time to spend out here with my equipment filming you know traveling to the farm getting to know the farmer uh, all that editing it and then somebody just thinks they can copy it right off the internet and make their own video with it I that aggravates me I remember about three or four years ago I got an email from somebody saying hey go check out channel so-and-so it says he's got a lot of your videos I mean a lot of your videos on there so I go to this YouTube channel and I don't remember the name he had 92 videos on his channel and 90 of them were mine and he even left my title and everything in the end video by Mike Less and so forth well you can report them to Google and uh, if, you re if somebody took more than five of your videos and you report it, then uh, YouTube would actually take down their entire channel. Well, now uh, Google or YouTube's got uh, software in place right now, so you actually get notifications now. If somebody copied your video or part of your video, you can actually go to your copyright uh, and see it, and then you can uh, report it that way, and YouTube will take it down. I guess it really doesn't matter what you do. Uh, somebody's always there to take away the hard work of another. Uh, get the easy way out but uh, anyways that's one of the things that definitely frustrates me also run into that on Instagram where uh, that's why and that's why I have this photo stamp down here in the corner of all my videos now and so forth because people were taking my content copying it and you're seeing a lot of the other uh, uh, bloggers and stuff are doing the same thing right now and that that's the main reason right there but uh, I also especially on Instagram you get people that will screenshot one of your pictures and then they'll crop out your photo stamp and upload it as theirs they won't give you any credit or anything so I guess people are trying to build their brand but it just like I said it just aggravates me because every video on my channel I personally went out there and videoed it myself I edited it myself and I just don't like uh, somebody to take the easy way out if you know what I'm saying another good topic is the comment section I try to keep up with the comments the best I can on my videos, but sometimes it's hard. Um, but once in a while you get some uh, negative comments or some nasty comments, and there's really no reason for that. I don't understand it. Um, you know, no reason to cut down a guy's uh, farm machinery that he runs or his farming practices or so forth. That guy's making a living doing what he's doing here. And uh, he's been successful, so I don't know why people feel they got to comment and tell him how he needs to run his operation. I'm just out here to do the video. I don't ask questions. Uh, people ask me all the time, how many acres does this guy farm? What's his yield? What's this? I don't ask those questions. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you wouldn't like it if someone come up and said, how much money do you make a year? 
or uh, do you own your house or do you rent your house you know so I don't ask those questions so if you do comment and ask how many acres a guy farms this or that um, I'm not going to tell you because I never asked the guy. I'd never ask somebody how many cows they're milking, this or that. If they tell me and they want me to put it in the video, I will. But normally, I feel that's personal information and I just leave that out. And I really had my eyes uh, open when I started traveling for a living all over the country. Growing up working for my grandpa on the farm, I just assumed everybody farmed the same way uh, that we did in our area. But as I started traveling, you know, you got a lot of different factors in here. You got uh, different climates, you got areas that don't get hardly any rain, uh, harsher winters, uh, a lot of different things. They grow different crops, the farming practices are different because of precipitation, this or that. Uh, some guys still moldboard plow for good reason, and uh, that's probably the one that gets people uh, up in arms the most. When I put a moldboard plowing video on, a lot of people get mad. Uh, why that guy's plowing and so forth well they have a good reason for it and there's a reason they're doing it obviously they're successful doing it so i don't know why people get all up in arms or want to tell them how to run their operation unless you're from that area and know what the climate is and the crops they grow you probably don't know the reason why they're doing it farming is just different everywhere throughout the country of course uh, most of my videos are from the united states i've been in uh, all the lower 48 i've driven all across this country many times all across Canada. I've been to Europe several times. Got a couple videos from the UK and so forth. So I did, I have seen a lot of stuff and uh, learned a lot of stuff over the years. It's definitely interesting uh, how everybody does everything, but they do it for good reason and it works for them. They make a living doing it. So, and I'm just happy that they let me come out here and film it and share it on YouTube. And with all that said, and me doubling my uh, subscribers this year, I just felt it was important to do a video here again uh, and explain who Mike Les is, what I do, why I do it, and so forth, and what I'm sharing with you. So I uh, hope I told my story good enough that everybody understands it. And for those of you that I have met at farm shows, look forward to meeting you again. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new people out there that uh, look forward to meeting in the future. So anyways, I still have a lot of good stuff from this fall. I still have some corn silage videos, some corn harvest videos, tillage and so forth I need to get edited up here by the end of the year and I'm always looking for new content so stay tuned you never know what you're gonna see next here on my YouTube channel thanks for watching everybody